before I get back in any more of my responses, I just wanted to point out that I actually filmed the uh, introduction to the last six uh, all in a row before I did any responses. The idea was to film the introductions and then go back and film the responses all in one day, but time got away from me, things came up, and I was not able to do it, so that is why there is a change in lighting and even what I am wearing we have from uh, the introduction to the later responses. Okay, so I'm actually trying to get through these as quickly as possible, so my introduction here is going to be very brief. This is number eight. I believe this is where we're going to get into some really wild stuff. Let's get into number eight. Number eight thing that Mormons believe that is really weird is they believe that the Garden of Eden is actually in Missouri. <laughs> I mean, move over, Middle East. Yeah, Missouri, you know, that bastion of holiness out there. <laughs> <laughs> where, where all those holy things were, and all that really, really fancy looking, beautiful state, Missouri. <laughs> you know, that's where the Garden of Eden is. And uh, they actually, I believe Brigham, Brigham Young actually believed that. And uh, so they actually believe that Jesus Christ is even going to come back and land in Kansas City, and they actually have a church there that's shaped like a slide. So when he comes down, he can just slide around and just kind of, you know, water slide into the earth because, you know, go Jesus, you know. <laughs> that's really bizarre. But that's what Mormons believe. Let's dissect this a moment. The Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden is no longer on the earth. And we don't really, as far as I can tell, don't know exactly where the Garden of Eden was. The revelations recorded in the Doctrine and Covenants speak only of Adam on Diamon, which is where Adam dwelt after being kicked out of the Garden of Eden. So we don't know exactly where the Garden of Eden was. But it was in North America. We know this from modern revelation. But, you see, the Bible does not clarify locations before the flood. There are many locations in the Bible that we can't verify today, even after the flood. But before the flood, we don't know where anything was. The assumption is that it was in the Middle East for two reasons. The first being that the majority of the Bible is a record of the lands of the Middle East. And therefore, it is assumed that because the rest of the Bible is located in this area of the Middle East, that the time before the flood is also located in this area. But that is only an assumption without direct evidence. The other assumption being made is because some names that appear before the flood also appear after the flood, therefore they are speaking of the same location. And this is not a logical assumption to make. Many places change names over time. Many places are named for previous places or past places and people. For instance, we have the four rivers. We have the, there's a river that flows out of Eden and then it divides into four heads. These four rivers in the book of Genesis before the flood are called Pison, Gihon, Hiddekel, and Euphrates. Now we do have Euphrates in the Middle East. There's a river, the Euphrates. And so people assume that this is the same river that came from the River of Eden. But they don't know. This is all speculation. And then we have to also consider that Noah was on the ark for over a year. He was floating around for eight, nine months. Do you think the ark just raised up in the air and then lowered itself right where it started? Of course not. It floated up in the land that it would eventually be North America. And after eight months, it landed in the mountains of Ararat, out in the Middle East. And when Noah and his sons came off the ark, and they had children, and they began to spread across the land, nothing would be more natural than for them to name places, rivers, locations, after those places and locations that they had known before the flood. They named one of the rivers Euphrates after the river that they had known before the flood. Ethiopia was a land before the flood given that name given to a land in Africa. All these things, just because they have the same name, does not mean they are the same location. To give you a nice modern example, in Utah there is a river that flows from uh, Lake Utah north into the Salt Lake. When the Saints moved out to Utah, they named that river the Jordan. It's not the same river as the one in the Middle East. The Jordan River that goes between the Sea of Galilee and the Dead Sea. That's the sea, that's the river that is talked of 
in the scriptures. But there is a River Jordan in Utah. See, we can't assume, as I said, you can't assume that because things share a name, that that means they are the same. And so the Bible itself does not tell us where the Garden of Eden was. Now, as I said near the beginning, the, uh, the actual location of the Garden of Eden itself, I don't think we know, even in modern Revelation, we were not told. What we are told is this. This is Doctrine and Covenants, section 116. Spring Hill is named by the Lord Adam on Diamond, because, said he, it is the place where Adam shall come to visit his people, or the Ancient of Days shall sit, as spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Now this is going back to Daniel chapter 7, and he does mention this in the video, and I will talk about that a little later, but this is where we get the location of Adam on Diamond being in Missouri. Now Spring Hill, Missouri, that's actually somewhat north. There it is. Now this is not the first time the name Adam on Diamond was used in modern revelation. This one was in 1838 that Joseph Smith received this revelation in section 116. But as early as 1832, we had this revelation. It says, That thou may come up unto the crown prepared for you, and be made rulers over many kingdoms, saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Zion, who hath established the foundations of Adam on Diamond. This was the first reference to Adam on Diamond, at least in official sources. But we have a few other ones here. In section 107, in the year 1835, says here, Three years previous to the death of Adam, he called Seth, Enos, Canaan, Mahalalel, Jared, Enoch, and Methuselah, who were all high priests, with the residue of his posterity, who were righteous, into the valley of Adam on Diamond, and there bestowed upon them his last blessing. So Adam on Diamond, the valley of Adam on Diamond. It's not a small location, not a town. It's a whole valley. But it's more than that. Because shortly after uh, identifying Spring Hill as Adam on Diamond, in 1838, section 117, we read, Is there not room enough on the mountains of Adam on Diamond, or on the plains of Olahashenea, or the land where Adam dwelt, that ye should covet that which is but a drop, and neglect the more weighty matters. The valley of Adam on Diamond and the mountains, not just one mount, not one peak, but mountains of Adam on Diamond. So Adam on Diamond is a large area. God put that name on a specific location in Spring Hill, Missouri, because that is where Adam called the last conference of his posterity together before he died and bless them. And that is where he will once again sit as the Ancient of Days in the last days and call his righteous posterity one more time to meet with him as is prophesied in the book of Daniel. That is why that specific location is named in the modern day Adam on Diamond. Now none of this, as I said, this isn't a contradiction of the Bible because the Bible doesn't tell us where the Garden of Eden was. Now he also brings up these, he, he kind of dismisses this laughingly, you know, move over Middle East, you know, all those nice, look at all the holy things and the beauty in Missouri. We, we get rid of, have you compared Missouri to the Middle East? Missouri is a beautiful place. Here's a picture of Spring Hill, or what we call in the church, Adam on Diamond. Look at this place. Compare it to the Middle East. Look at other pictures of Missouri. See, he only shows you pictures of tornadoes, floods, criminal mugshots. He's trying to say that, look at all of this violence, whether it be natural violence or human violence. He's only showing you that. But I could do the same thing with the Middle East. Look at the flood in the Middle East. Look at the wars that are tearing through the Middle East for the last 500 years. If all you want to do is focus on the violence, you can do that anywhere. But if you want to focus on the sheer beauty of a place, I mean, I love the Middle East. It's got some great sights, but it doesn't compare to Missouri. It doesn't compare to the Midwest of the United States and the Great Plains. The natural beauty of the United States far surpasses the natural beauty of the Middle East. And on a final note, he brings up, well, he says, oh, they believe that he's going to come back to Kansas City. <clears throat> no, no. Kansas City has nothing to do with it. Kansas City is... It means nothing. 
Independence, Missouri, is where the city of Zion will be built. But what he's talking about, he's making reference again to Daniel. And that's not going to be in Kansas City or in Independence. It's going to be at Spring Hill, or the land that we now call Adam on Diamond. He's got his geography wrong there. But then he shows the temple of the community of Christ. Now, the community of Christ is a very large offshoot of the original Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And they are very much separated from us. They are not affiliated. They are no, clo they are no more closely affiliated with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints then the Baptists are affiliated with the Catholics. This is a, a, de a deceitful presentation showing this building and claiming that the Mormons built it. Now, in one shot, he does show the sign that says Community of Christ on it. But it's only shown for a second or two before they pan up so that you can't see it anymore. And what this is doing, what this shows, and he's done this on a number of occasions in this video, and that is, he's taking all the splinter groups, all the offshoots that broke away and have their own doctrine that's very different from the original church. And he's taking their doctrine and setting it up as saying, this is what all of them believe. By showing this, he is trying to make a mockery of the church, but he's doing so in a disingenuous way. But it's important to note, this building is not built by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And most people associate the name Mormon with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the church that is headquartered in Salt Lake City. That's what most people associate the name with. But the Community of Christ, though it is an offshoot group, is very different, has very different doctrine. They are a very separate church. As separate from us as the Baptists are from the Catholic Church. Now, if he doesn't know this, then he's too ignorant for anybody to listen to on this subject. If he does know this, then presenting it in this way is a purposeful attempt to deceive the viewers. It is a very deceitful thing to do. If he doesn't realize it himself, then, as I said, he's either... Too ignorant to be pay, to for anybody to pay attention to, or he's being purposely purposely deceitful. But I'm going to leave that here. I've been talking too long as it is. If you are enjoying it, like, subscribe, and tune in next time.